Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to be filling and planting this beautiful bed behind me here at the nursery. We created these beds, gosh, uh, last year. Yes, it was last year, late in the summer, and this sweet pool of red never got planted. So we are going to do that today. We is gonna be uh, the Jerry, Jenny, and Randy team today working on this, and we have got some gorgeous, beautiful plants that we're gonna put in here. Randy and I have been sitting here trying to come up with a plan, a design plan, because we really are just kind of flying by the seat of our pants here. Um, so that's just the fun, organic, spontaneous part of gardening that we love. So let me just give you an idea of this bed, okay? Obviously here we are at the nursery, right? We've got the greenhouse. This bed over here is filled with the easy scapes, which is doing magnificent by the way. And then we have this nice larger bed that's a little bit of a, odd shape, right? Um, and within the bed, the only thing that we currently have is this little bit of a very low retaining wall and then this beautiful planter here. This is the Asian water bowl from Unique Stone. Massive, huge bowl. This is a little lime standard that is about to um, put on some buzz. She is growing quite nicely and gorgeous. And then down below, we switch out our annuals. We had pansy, well, we had violas in here. And then now we have the brand new, this is the Super Bells um, Prism Pink Lemonade. It is out this year and available. This fun caliber koa changes colors. It is absolutely stunning. So it will, as you can see, has completely really filled in and then it will go ahead and trail over. And then we have these beautiful oh so easy roses. This is actually the rose of the year. Nice low um, growing roses. They are not gonna get super tall. They're gonna be a little bit wider than they are tall, but it's really fun because your flowers will change as they come out. So you can see here, you have got just this beautiful kind of ombre kaleidoscope of colors. Nice, really happy, healthy plants. The only thing that I have done to them thus far was in the winter as I trimmed them back. And there they go, they are nice and happy. So we have that in here as well. So we've got really a lot of freedom to have some fun in here because we are going to be taking apart the display beds in the trial garden because we're gonna be installing the Proven Winter Signature Garden. That is typically where we will put all of the new introductions for the next year. So we've got all of these beautiful 2024 new introductions. And so we're gonna use this bed this year and maybe we'll do it for years to come too, but this is where we're gonna put those plants so that when our customers come, they can really see all of these gorgeous plants that are gonna be introduced next year see how they're performing and get up close and personal with these plants and just get a fun um, perspective on how they are doing so they can make notes if they want to add them to their gardens next year. Now we also have, Jerry went ahead and brought over um, our pl power planter um, augers and so that is what we're gonna be using today. You can see here, this is a great kind of display because we've got all three options that we really use. We have three different drills. These two drills both have the e-clutch system on them, which when you hit compacted soil or a root or a rock, it'll automatically cut off. So it's a kind of a safety feature that is built in to these two, which we really, really love. This is actually Jerry's personal, uh, it's a 20 volt drill, nice, small, just a, a what the, the homeowner's gonna have, right? and it has that smaller auger on it. That is great for bulbs. It is also great for the grande containers. So you can see all of the different sizes that we have here, um, and just that is what we're gonna use. So we're gonna take care of that today. Now, yes, there is mulch down on here. We will address that, we'll pull it back, then we will drill our holes we do have three little lime punches up there. I don't know if that's exactly where they're gonna go, but I know that I wanna add those into the garden as well. So we've got um, some really, really fun plants that I wanna share with you. Randy and I went ahead and put them here on the wagon and um, I just watered them. So they're a little, they're a little smushed right now. So <laughs> they'll perk back up here in a little bit. 
I don't know that we're going to use all these plants, but we're going to certainly have some fun trying to get them all in here. This is one that I am super excited about. I've used it before. You have seen it. This is going to be again available next year. So this is the Supertunia Saffron Finch Petunia. It is a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous yellow petunia. A true yellow has a little bit of that ombre effect, right? Darker in the center and then it lightens up. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, we also have a really fun new one that is the Supertunia Hoopla Vivid Orchid. And this one, as you can see, has a really nice kind of that jazzberry color with a white edge. We've got Cherry Drop Coleus, which is the new trailing coleus. Um, so that's the Color Blaze series. There's already a chocolate drop and a strawberry drop. So we are introducing the Cherry Drop and this will do sun or shade. So this is a great trailing coleus, a lot of fun. Um, the improved white scavola, we've got that in there. Um, let's move on down the line. Not only are we going to use some of the new introductions, but we're also going to use um, some great tried and true plants that we just love and adore. So we've got the Rockin' Deep Purple Salvia. We have the Blue Mohawk Grass. We're using this because um, one, it could be a perennial for us, but it's also a, it loves water. So this is Graceful Grass's Blue Mohawk. It'll be about two to three feet tall. The more water it gets, the taller it is going to be. Um, the reason we pulled that, and this is just from our inventory, is because historically, um, right here, you can see where it tends to be a little bit wet. So we're gonna put probably somewhere in this location. We have to be careful because you can see we're right here on the drive and, uh, huh, you can see some truck, some truck tire tracks in there and sometimes it gets run over. So we'll have to kind of plan that out. Um, we do want to put some Suncredible sunflowers in here. And then of course the um, annual of the year, which is the gum Frina. There comes Jerry. The truthful of pink is back there as well. So lots of fun plants. So I think what we're going to do is just kind of set the camera up. Jerry, Randy and I are going to get together put our brains together, come up with a design, and then once we have the design together, then I'll meet you back here and we'll talk about why we planted the plants or why we placed the plants where we did and our whole reasoning behind that. All right, my friends, um, we just have one or two plants in this flower bed that we need to plant. Oh my goodness, it is going to be absolutely fantastically gorgeous. You wanna talk about flower power and making a huge statement? This bed is going to do that. Um, <laughs> So um, I'm going to show you the design and kind of explain to you our thought process on how we laid this out. We got a little bit of wind and then we had some rain. Um, so some of the plants fell down. We're trying to get those uh, uh, stood up right now. So what you'll see Jerry and Randy back there, they're going ahead and laying down some of the raised bed mix because we needed to bring that up. I'll explain that to you in a minute, but that is what they are doing. Now, 
in this flower bed, right? This is going to be a master huge showpiece of a flower bed. You want to talk about inspiration, this is going to be the bed that's going to do it. Um, we basically started with that blank slate except for the retaining wall and the container right there. So our thought process is we didn't have any hydrangeas and I do adore a hydrangea and you've got to have them in a flower bed. So these are going to be nice and low so we have three of the little lime punches that are just that great new introduction from proven winners that nice tight compact beautiful creamy almost iridescent flowers on it so we wanted some structure so we kind of did a little bit of an arch right there like a semi-circle they're about three feet apart from each other so they're going to grow together and be a hedge then the next structure we came down was a firelight tidbit. We felt like we just needed something to anchor this space. And we don't have the tidbit or the little line punches in of any of the gardens here. So we wanted to showpiece those. And as Randy said, this will be a great display of the difference between the firelight tidbit and the little line punch. So for our main structure, we wanted the bed to be balanced, not symmetrical and not even. We have got a huge mass planting of the Suncredible sunflowers over here. And we, yes, we have planted these um, a lot closer together than what you would do um, if it were not a huge display bed, right? We are doing this as a business for huge instant impact as close as we can get. So it's a double row of the sunflowers through here and they kind of tuck up a little bit behind the hydrangea. In front of that, a huge, massive pocket of the Truffula Pink Gum Freena. This is the annual of the year. So again, nice big, huge pocket. So you might notice that some of the annuals are not in the branded cups. That is because these plants were specifically ordered and had a purpose that they were coming here into the display beds. When we were paint, potting them up this winter, we ran out of proven winter pots at that moment because it was the very last things that we potted up. And so we ran out and we just put them in these containers. These are not for sale. So just to let you know, we're we're good to go on that. Um, so you'll see some of those. So the, the gum frina is there. And then coming in front of those, these are, um, this is the new, there's gonna be a new mini vista. This is ultra marine, really nice, rich purple. It reminds me very much of like a royal velvet, but it's smaller. Midnight is more intense and a lot darker. Um, the ultramarine, like I said, kind of reminds me of uh, a, a mini royal velvet very very pretty so we did that in a huge group now you'll see that some of these um, are really leggy so once we get them in the ground we're probably going to go ahead and cut them back so if you have plants annuals especially that gets get too out of control you can come in and trim them up it is not a problem whatsoever but huge massive ribbon of those that come up all the way behind um, we have three of the graceful grasses this is the blue mohawk which likes it nice and wet these corners tend to be wet it will get that two to three feet and just be a really fun nice texture popping up right here on the end of the bed and we actually have that on the other end of the bed as well so we're coming through here we'll have a nice big height hedge of the sunflowers and then kind of that tapered down to our lowest point now in front of the little lime punches we have that hoopla right so that's the vivid orchid hoopla vivid orchid um, petunia and you can just see how fun it is hoopla vivid orchid that's what it's called um, just really fun and we thought that would be great in front of the creamy white panicle hydrangeas and then coming on down that is why we wanted to go ahead and put this tidbit right here because we wanted to put in another petunia and I didn't like the idea of one petunia rolling on into the next so we have the tidbit and then the I had two left of the sweet potato vines. Um, this is an improved version of the uh, mahogany, I believe it is. And so nice, really heart shaped, kind of that reddish color. And then this new sweet thing, look at this. This is pink tiara, um, supertunia pink tiara. 
and it has a really fun um, color on it so it will start a solid hot pink and then as it matures the center will turn white so you've got a gorgeous little ombre effect going on with those and we did another big huge mass planting right there so they're all going to grow together coming up behind the roses we have a huge i mean there's probably 40 50 <laughs> of the rocking deep purple salvias that just kind of start here on the corner and then go all the way around back to over here I put them close together that is going to be a massive huge hedge and so we went ahead and put them there because i thought it'd be really pretty behind the roses and we have more of the sunflowers here on this corner so when you look at the whole bed we've got the center of the salvias right here and then sunflowers here and then sunflowers there so there's a bit of balance on that whole bed right through there um, and then coming down we also have oh, thank you Dana so um, we also have some balance because I wanted this center of the bed to be very symmetrical and balanced as we possibly could so we have white scavola on each corner this is the improved white scavola um, so it'll be a nice little pocket of that then we came down with the cherry drop coleus on each side in front of that then all around the base of the Asian water bowl we have the new saffron finch and then the final right here in the center is the great new y'all went nuts over this it is the new super bina this is the pink cashmere now these have not started blooming yet these are some of the newer ones but a absolutely gorgeous pink massive huge blooms on them i put these in the deck boxes behind the house and then just to kind of give you an even more of an idea so in the trough of course i mean the water bowl is the pink lemonade then we have pink and yellow down here and then remember up in the aqua pots up here we have pink and yellow as well so trying to tie all that in there together and then you'll notice behind the seating wall or on top of that the seating wall excuse me i'm used to my house the retaining wall we have the sweet potato vine that we're actually going to plant in the ground so it will spill over this retaining wall and have a beautiful contrast of color coming over right there and then finally the last little corner um, again it's kind of balanced it's not the exact same but we have sunflowers up here then we have the truffle of pink in front of there um, and then more grasses and then finally the new improved bermuda beach super tunia look how massive these flowers are i mean these blooms are huge gorgeous um, really nice kind of a stocky plant now i did pinch this one back i believe um, maybe yes i did but just a nice robust healthy plant gorgeous color and again that ties in to the aqua pots that are up there so what we're going to do is we're going to work as a team here together uh, josh has joined us so we've got four folks here to film and get these babies in the ground as far as land prep soil prep what we're going to do there is mulch down so randy and i are going to pull back the mulch probably about like for every plant pull that back and then move these plants fellas will come in here they will aug them and then we come back and plant the soil as far as itself when we installed these beds last year we added a really thick thick layer of compost so we're not going to amend the soil at all these are nice tough plants they will do great the only place that we added soil was behind the retaining wall just because of the depth it was too low so we needed to bring that up um, so we're just going to go in here and uh, we're going to try to knock it out as fast as we possibly can
The project is complete, my friends. <laughs> there's 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 a lot of plants in there and as we were uh working as a team roman joined us too and uh randy was like y'all i think they are multiplying this certainly felt that way but man this is going to make such a beautiful statement when our customers come in here to the nursery and what a fantastic way to display the new 2024 introductions for next year from Proven Winners. Now, this is not all of the new introductions. There's a lot of beautiful caliber coas. And for us, where we are in North Carolina with our thick red clay, caliber coas don't do really well in the landscape. So we will find another way to display them for our customers to see. But we are super excited about this. Um, it, it's just gonna make a beautiful statement because literally everybody will come in, this comes into the nursery this way and sees these plants right away. It was funny, we were getting ready to um, start planting and our Jackson came over and he his like jaw was like on the ground because he was like, oh my goodness. He said that is a ton of plants and I have never seen that many plants in this garden before. And it is absolutely true. Beautiful. I mean, just massive color pops. We try to incorporate and for it to make sense because that is a little bit of a challenge as far as like you have all these different plants and you want it to look cohesive and not like a hodgepodge of just pockets of random plants stuck places. So hopefully as everything fills in, it will make a little bit of sense as far as from a design standpoint. But by having those repeating elements where we have the sunflowers on each of those far back corners, that certainly helps having the blue mohawk grass again on each corner more forward. That helps the gum frina all between that on each side and then the center of the bed being balanced with all of that beautiful rock and deep purple salvia in the back the saffron finches in the middle and then the white scavolas and all that so you were just trying to make it look balanced and cohesive not that it's perfectly symmetrical or or you know matchy matchy we don't want it to be matchy matchy we just wanted people to come in and go oh my goodness that is a beautiful flower bed so hopefully we have achieved that of course we will keep you updated on this bed it will be easy to do when we do our weekly nursery tours and kind of show you the maintenance on it but when we were planting them unless they were extremely um, root bound which just a couple of them were the most vigorous ones that had been planted earlier we just kind of took our thumbs and just popped them pop those roots open and then everything else just got slammed down into the ground and then there you go so maintenance on this the entire flower bed is already nice and moist because of us watering those plants that are up from the nursery so the water just naturally trickles down the driest corner is where there are no plants over there um, kind of where the aqua pots are so we just may have to kind of keep an eye on that and then come through with our water soluble fertilizer uh, every seven to 14 days and get them nice and fed so as always we hope you have found this fun informative and inspirational as always we so appreciate you thank you for gardening the creek side y'all have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next video bye friends